Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over the 7.1 update patch notes and basically going over everything there is to know about these patch notes. So without further ado, if you do enjoy the content, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I stream every single day at twitch.tv slash enders. First link in the description. Drop my channel a follow. It is free. I mentioned in yesterday's video that I would make this video, so as you can see, you know, I'm, I'm keeping that promise. In terms of when Update 7.1 comes out, it will drop alongside the new Frontlines event. If you want to know more about that event, you can watch yesterday's video, which I will link in the description. All you need to know is, basically, Frontlines from Battlefield 1 is coming back. This update will release April 16th and features improvements for visual weapon recoil and a balance pass to a lot of shotguns and actually an increase to rocket launcher ammo for engineers, but there's also quite a bit more uh, changes to go over. When this event releases alongside this update on April 16th, you can play Frontlines on Haven, Reclaimed, Discarded, and Redacted, and on April 30th, you're going to be able to play the final map that will ever be added, or I guess sort of reused, in Battlefield 2042. That is right, they're giving us the stadium at the end of the month. So I suppose we can finally see what they did with that sort of perpetually in limbo piece of content. It was sort of utilized for a while, the beginning of the game, then it was removed, and now they're repurposing it as a standalone map. It's been kind of a mess with that, but I'm glad. I am glad to see that they are using it. However, I do have concerns about how it's going to play. I do think they're going to make it verticality heavy. Like, when I say verticality, I think it's going to have like three or four separate floors. I think it's basically going to play like a vertical redacted. But we'll have to wait and see. Moving on to the changes about visual recoil, DICE has heard our feedback, allegedly, and alongside the hotfix that was aimed at fixing insane problems with the Avancies and the AK-24 iron sights, this update will include a wide pass of changes that will correct, quote, most of the player reported issues surrounding visual recoil. In DICE's words, quote, visual recoil on multiple weapons, sights, and specific weapon slash sight combinations have been adjusted, including deviation of reticle to screen center on the following weapons, G428, BSVM, SVK, VCAR, M39, P90, DM7, DXR, RPT, PKP, AK5C, M240B, and the Desert Eagle. One thing to pay attention to here is that they specifically mentioned visual recoil's relationship to the screen center, which is very important. You don't want visual recoil lying to your players. So basically, I think what will happen here is the visual recoil will essentially just be updated weapon shooting animations for the body of the weapon, and the sight itself might not move at all. More specific visual recoil changes to specific sites of weapons. You got Raven 4X, you got Ghost Hybrids, all the hollow sites, Fusion Hollow, bunch of sites here. Basically, they focused on scopes in general, ranging from about uh, two, 2X to all the way up to 8X. Moving away from the visual recoil changes to the weapon section, they removed scope glint from the XM8 ACOG, and they fixed an issue that caused clip ejection of the M1 Garand to not play the intended ping sound, which of course, guys, that's a core game issue, obviously, right? <laughs> that really needed to be mentioned. On top of all that, the AK-5C has seen actually a deceptively important change to how much damage the high power ammo of that weapon does, and I actually mentioned this in my specific video going over the loadout for the AK-5C. They increased the high power ammo damage by 1 from 25 to 26 under 50 meters. This might seem like it's not important, but actually the AK-5C with high power ammo, with, uh, as it stands right now, does not benefit from hitting any headshots. So the one damage increase from 25 to 26 means using high power ammo is now officially worth it on the AK-5C. And for whatever reason, they also made the hip fire recoil pattern change to have less pull to the right while you're shooting the AK-5C in hip fire. Uh, unfortunately, in my opinion, they nerfed the SCZ-3. They increased its spread by an average of 8%. It's very accurate, but I don't know. That's just, it's not so accurate that it's a problem, in my opinion. They also it reduced recoil and spread by an average of 10% for the Type 88 LMG, and the AKS-74U has seen its starting accuracy increased by an average of 10%, while also slightly increasing horizontal recoil, but to compensate for that, the rate of fire has been increased from 650 to 675. All in all, the AKS-74U is still going to be fairly bad, but it should be significantly better than it is right now. 
Jumping ahead to some specific shotgun improvements, update 7.1, quote, introduces a collection of improvements that should now balance shotgun gameplay and provide further emphasis on engaging in tactical gunplay when choosing to use these weapons. There will now be more of a choice between relying on movement and agility to close up the gap to an enemy and to use hip fire or pre-aiming down sights before turning corners and playing more tactically. This reduction in effectiveness of hip fire at medium ranges should notably improve balance in CQC focus areas and maps and require a higher skill level to get the most out of using shotguns." End quote. So all that jargon just to say that they have essentially nerfed shotgun hipfire spread across the board for every shotgun in the game, but simultaneously they have increased the aim down sight accuracy. So for weapons like the MCS-880 for instance, I don't anticipate this will actually be a massive nerf, because if they're increasing the ADS accuracy, you will still be able to one-shot people from very significant distance. Uh, if this will impact weapons like the 12M, which in my opinion needed to be just absolutely and totally gutted since the game launched, too brain dead of a weapon to use, I'm glad to see it's finally getting a significant nerf. Moving on to one of the final sections of this update, just a reminder, if you are enjoying the content and you find it informative, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I also stream every single day at twitch.tv slash enders, first link in the description. Now the specialist section, for whatever reason, DICE has decided to increase the amount of ammo the recoilless M5 and the RPG can carry by one. So I don't understand this because, in my opinion, the rockets that are provided to these weapons are already sufficient on top of list being in the game. I think what DICE is trying to do here is they're just trying to make people attempt to solo tanks, but I don't necessarily think it's okay to give people enough ammo to where if they hit like five shots on a tank in the body, they can solo it. I think they're giving engineers too much AT available to their kit. On top of the fact that the AT in this game is incredibly easy to use. Liss is completely and utterly overpowered. The recoilless rifle, even after its velocity nerf, is still too fast. And if increasing the amount of ammo these rocket launchers can carry isn't enough, they also just felt the need to increase the AT mine explosive radius by about 5-10% to 10 in terms of its, like, blast radius. So... I don't, I don't really know what they're doing here. AT in this game is so weird. The infantry versus ground vehicle balance in particular is very strange. And the final change I will mention in this video is in the vehicle section. They fixed an issue that resulted in several armored vehicles having misaligned crosshairs. So that is going to wrap it up for this update. Remember, it comes out April 16th alongside the Frontlines event. If you enjoyed the content or find it informative, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Follow my Twitch stream. I stream every single day. Join the Discord. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. All links are in the description. And I'll see you guys later. Oh my god.